Here's what happens when you drink your protein instead of eating it, in a way that a five-year-old can understand it. Hi, other half just wanted to know if they could have liquid protein, aka protein shakes. For a lot of people, it's simply easier to drink their protein instead of eating it. But what you probably don't know is there's actually science behind that. Chewing and digesting your food burns calories too. So when you consume things like protein shakes or liquid forms of food, you're using less energy because you're swallowing instead of chewing and the digestion of those liquids also uses less energy. So while your body might still be getting those 30 grams of protein, it actually digests completely different. This is actually quite interesting. It is true that approximately 20 to 30% of the calories that you ingest in the form of protein are utilized to digest and utilize that protein. Meaning, if you ingest 100 calories of protein, you may actually burn 20 to 30 calories. Whereas for carbohydrates, it's 5 to 10 calories, and for dietary fat, it's 0 to 3 calories. With that being said, the reason why protein actually has such a high thermic effect isn't just because it does take a little bit more energy to digest. In fact, approximately 70% of the calories that are burned in response to protein ingestion are actually due to an increase in protein synthesis after the ingestion of protein. Therefore, this diet-induced thermogenesis is actually thought to be due to an increase in protein synthesis, a process that acutely increases our energy expenditure. Another percentage of these calories actually is due to the deamination and catabolism of amino acids, as well as the synthesis of urea. And many studies indicate that gluconeogenesis actually is responsible for another very large percentage of the thermogenic response to protein, which is the process of turning the amino acids within protein into glucose. Therefore, only a very small percentage of the calories that are burned after the ingestion of protein actually are due to the metabolic expenditure it takes to break down and digest these proteins. Therefore, the difference in thermogenesis in response to liquid or solid proteins is likely extremely small. However, and because it takes longer to break and digest those foods down, you're also going to feel fuller on the same amount of calories. This statement is perfectly demonstrated by this randomized control trial in which, unfortunately for the participants, they took two groups, one ingesting a steamed chicken breast and 750 milliliters of water, the other group consuming a chicken breast shake, in which the chicken breast was blended in 500 milliliters of water, and they drank the additional 250 milliliters, meaning both groups consumed the same amount of chicken breast and the same amount of water. And it was concluded, despite the protein shake probably being much more nauseating, the solid protein meal evokes a stronger suppression of hunger and desire to eat than the liquefied protein meal. Therefore, the solid meal did appear to suppress hunger more. However, we do also have studies indicating that a whey protein preload, in which you consume approximately 20 grams of protein 20 minutes prior to a meal, significantly reduces caloric intake. Therefore, both liquid and solid protein appear to have an appetite suppressive effect. Overall, I definitely agree that consuming your protein in solid versus liquid form will likely increase satiety and very, very slightly increase energy expenditure. However, the magnitude of difference of this thermogenic response is small, and liquid protein does still appear to be satiating, just not as satiating as solid protein. With that being said, if you would like an individualized approach to your nutrition and lifestyle to optimize your health, energy, and body composition, send me a DM to sign up for coaching.